Hi, this is Gustav, the developer of TubeTube. Welcome to our channel. In this video, I'm going to share with you some tips about how to set the speed of your animations, which means how to create either slow motion or very fast scenes, depending on your creative needs. Ok, let's start talking about the FPS parameter. FPS stands for frames per second, which means the number of frames being displayed by the player per every second of your animation. The standard of the industry uses to be 24 frames per second, but sometimes, depending on the complexity of the scene, it could be 12 FPS. So let's keep those values in mind, 12 and 24. Of course, for basic exercise you could try other values, but this is my recommendation. Try to stick to the standards. That's a good practice if you are planning to become a professional animator in the future. Following with the explanation, let's play with some math calculations here. If I choose to work using an FPS equals to 24, how many frames I have to draw to show one second of animation? Yes, 24. But what about if my animation lasts 2 seconds? Well, I will need 48 frames, and so on. The formula is quite basic. Multiply the duration you want for your animation in seconds per the FPS value you choose. The result is the number of frames that you have to create to finish your project. Let's try another example. Let's say that I want to create an 8 seconds long animation using an FPS of 12. How many frames I have to create? Yes, 8 times 12 is equal to 96 frames. Therefore, I will have to create 96 frames to accomplish my animation. I know that most of you want to start working on your projects just drawing without thinking so much about numbers. But I have to remind you that animation is about planning too. Understanding the size of the projects you want to animate is a really good practice because it gives you a useful reference about how much time you are going to need to finish all those ideas you have in mind. The estimated duration of your animation project is another important variable you should try to figure out. Of course, it depends on the number of scenes you want to include and how long will be each of them. Yes, it's not an easy value to calculate, but in any case, always try to guess an estimate of the entire duration of your project by imagining the whole animation in your mind and measuring the time with a stopwatch. Why is this a good practice? Well because it gives you the chance to choose how many resources you are going to invest in your animation and to make planning decisions about the scenes that maybe you could want to include, remove or change even before starting to draw the first line. It's important to say that the FPS value can be modified in any moment of the animation process. In fact, some users usually try different values for the FPS parameters once they have finished their scenes. Let's play with one example to understand the behavior of any animation as the FPS value changes. The initial FPS value for this animation is 12. Now, let's increase the parameters value and play the animation. As you can notice, it becomes faster. So the higher value you set for the FPS field, the faster your animation will look and the shorter it will last. On the other way, if we decrease the value of the FPS parameter, the animation will go slower and the longer it will last. Having said that, is this the right way to create either slow motion or faster scenes? The short answer is no. So how to do it? Let's take a look to the procedure. Assuming that you are not going to modify the initial value of the FPS parameter that you chose to work at the beginning of the project, the key of the speed for the elements in your scene depends on the distance that they advance between every frame. 
The bigger the distance of an element between the previous frame and the current, the faster it will look. On the other way, the shorter the distance, the slower the element will look. But let's make an example to understand this behavior. I'm going to start a new project just using two elements and setting the FPS value to 12. The element on top is going to move fast to the workspace from the left to right, and the second one is going to move in the same direction but really slow. Now, let's pay attention to the relative long distance between frames I'm going to use for the element on top. Remember, the bigger the distance, the faster it will look and the shorter the animation will last. Ok, let's work on the bottom element. This time, I'm going to use a very small distance of displacement for the element between frames, generating the illusion of slow motion. Of course, to animate this element, I'm going to need a lot of more frames, and as a consequence, the animation will last a lot more than the previous one. By the way, I recommend you to try this exercise by yourself, to get a better reference of the relationship between time and space when you are animating. To finish this lesson, let's talk about two effects based on the same exercise, acceleration and deceleration. In the previous example, we used a constant speed of the elements because the distance never changed between frames. But what if we start increasing or decreasing the distance of displacement? In the case of the acceleration, the distance is increased in every new frame, like in this example. Can you see how the element goes from slow to fast? In the case of the deceleration, the distance is decreased in every new frame generating the opposite effect. Can you see how the element goes from fast to slow? Finally, once you get familiar to all this theory, you will be able to generate a slow motion, faster scenes and even transitions between different speeds. Remember that animation is about to practice and discipline, so please don't forget to make your own exercise. Okay. That's all for now, I hope you liked this video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us in all our media channels. See you in the next video!